630 fighter jets dodging drones high above the Arizona desert. Arizona's family investigates close calls and a midair collision. In fact, our investigates team found 22 incidents over an eight month time frame through the FAA last year. And three of those drone sightings stand out. That is because they happened in restricted airspace south of Interstate 8 between Ajo and Yuma. It's the Barry M. Goldwater Range, and that is where investigative reporter Morgan Lowe begins this story. This is the Camino del Diablo, the Devil's Highway, 130 miles of dirt road that has taken travelers through scenic, rugged, and desolate desert since the 1500s. One reason it's still so isolated today is that it runs through the Barry M. Goldwater Range, where the most modern U.S. military jets pierce the clouds, practicing air-to-air -air combat and bombing targets on the ground. It's restricted airspace reserved only for military aircraft. But during a three-month period early last year, something else was sharing the skies with those fighter pilots, something that was not supposed to be out here. That something, aerial drones. According to FAA incident data we reviewed, fighter pilots spotted drones in the range's airspace on December 13th of 2022, January 19th of 2023, and February 14th of 2023. In the January incident, a drone actually struck the rear canopy of an F-16. It's a real problem. Mike Canada is the chair of the Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Program at Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott. He says any time a drone gets near a plane, it has potential for disaster. I think it's akin to bird strike. I mean, you hit it at the right place in, on, on the fuselage or in, or in the uh, cockpit area. Yeah, you can, you can bring down an aircraft. Bring it into land. This is our Matrice 600. Students and faculty at Emory Riddle work with the most advanced drones available to consumers. This thing is basically a giant payload carrier. But even these drones are unable to reach the altitudes that Air Force pilots reported seeing drones over the Goldwater Range. And one of those drones was big. The pilot reported seeing a five to 10 foot wingspan. Aerospace companies build things that, that size, uh, but I, that might have been a homemade kit or something doing something on their own. We found no reports that authorities on the range made any arrests or even spotted the drone operators. Officials from Luke Air Force Base and the Goldwater Range say they are not authorized to talk about what happened out here. And we're still waiting for some other records from a different Air Force Department. But a 2022 report from the Director of National Intelligence states that unidentified aerial phenomena events continue to occur in restricted or sensitive airspace, highlighting possible concerns for safety of flight or adversary collection activity. Would that be a situation where a drone could be used for like espionage or surveillance? Oh yeah, yeah. Why would somebody be interested in using spy drones out here, far away from the Air Force Base? Because of the types of jets that practice in this airspace. So we like to say we're the quarterback on the battlefield. Lieutenant Colonel Tyler Smith flies the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. We interviewed him for a different story when he described how advanced the F-35 is. It's the leading edge of our combat capability in America. Um, it'll always be at the forefront of any conflict we have for the for decades to come. And F-35s routinely fly over the Goldwater Range. Sometimes you can hear the jets, but you can't see them. Maybe somebody was just out there trying to film, a, get a good shot of an F-16 or, or doing something they weren't supposed to. On the other side of the coin, maybe it was a foreign entity or somebody trying to get some info. Mike Canada, who operated spy drones over Afghanistan and Iraq in his previous career, says it wouldn't surprise him if someone was trying to gain intelligence on the F-35 or other aircraft. One of the things that, that, that intelligence agencies do to kind of find out, you know, modus operandi are, are just watching for two or three weeks. I mean, how many aircraft come in there, what they're doing, you know, what missions are flying, you know, what they're dropping out there, just, just, and you can gather a lot 
just from that. This wow. is fascinating. Folks were freaking out when we had those Chinese spy balloons blown mm -hmm. off course, but this is a whole other ball of wax. So the incidents that you were looking into were like the end of 2022, the beginning of 2023. Have you seen anything since then? Nothing on the Goldwater range. Now the incidents outside of that Goldwater range, they did continue until about June of last year, but then they stopped and we don't really have any mm. explanation why there were no more reported drone sightings from these Air Force jets. And as you reported, these were large drones spotted by the pilots, a wingspan of five wow. or 10 feet, uh, flying much higher than a normal drone would be. Is it possible that you know, this is down near the border? Could they be operated by Customs and Border Protection or perhaps another agency? Yeah, we reached out to Customs and Border Protection. They said they do not fly drones over the range. They did say that they occasionally see drones come up from Mexico, but it's hard to say whether those drones would be that big or that, you know, high tech enough to get that high and that far into the United States. All right, so no Miles. documents, nothing official from Luke, but you are waiting for another agency, right? Hoping for some more information. We could have an update in the middle of next month, we're hoping. Okay, cross wow. our fingers and we know that you'll keep us posted. Yeah. Unbelievable story, Morgan, thank you.